Most of us don't like waiting. Particularly if we're waiting for something to change or something to get better. Waiting can be a very frustrating experience. To everything, there is a season. And to every purpose under heaven, there is a time for it. This is one of the best news I ever got in my life. But I understood that everything is a season. Let me tell you why. If you're having a bad time right now, it cannot last. If your business is going in the wrong direction, it's a seasonal slide. If you have no money right now, the good news is I am seasonally broke. That's why we are always reminded, never make a permanent decision in a temporary problem. Don't make a permanent decision over a temporary circumstance. Don't allow a moment of agony to make you draw a conclusion about life prematurely because if you just keep on walking God has a way of making everything all right you can't change the seasons they're set all of this has been set in motion so you can change yourself can't change the seasons but you can change yourself life and business is like the changing seasons you can't love your life and just love parts of it you got to learn how to embrace it all and the only way that we can ever embrace things that are painful or seem unjust or unfair or that we don't like is if we learn some secrets that the Apostle Paul talked about he said I've learned the secret of being content. One of the things that we know about life is that you're always going to be changing. In the old pattern, in the old chapter, you had certain patterns, right? In the old chapter of your life, you would go to the bar and drink. You would go to the store and spend money you didn't have. You're in a new chapter now. And so you have different patterns. When the patterns change, so will your circle of friends. It's a fact of life. But that doesn't mean your old friends aren't friends anymore. It just means that you don't want to hang out with them. You still care about them, but you don't like doing what they do. The patterns have changed. And if you're going to reach your destiny, you have to learn to kiss things goodbye. You're not going to understand everything that happens. Life may not turn out the way you thought. Uh, people may walk away. It's easy to get bitter, lose your passion, Kiss the person that walked away goodbye. Kiss the bitterness goodbye. Kiss the dream that didn't work out goodbye. God wouldn't have allowed it to happen if he didn't have something better in front of you. The hardest thing to do, the hardest thing to deal with, the hardest thing to put up with is transition. The thing we hate the most is transition. We hate it because it takes us out of our element. It takes us out of our comfort zone. You cannot control everything when you are in transition. It is what it is. It happens like it happens. I can't be pretty about it. I got to come out any way I can. I'm in transition. When my water breaks, get ready. Here I come. That's my Son, here I come. Touch your neighbor and say, move. Don't neglect a new life if you've started a new life. Learn the good evil. Summer time. Here's what you must not become. A victim of yourself. What is that insidious voice inside your own head that says, you're too short, it'll never work for you, you're too tall. And here's what you've got to do. Cooperate with the positive side of your life and let faith drive out doubt. Let winning drive out losing. Let positive drive out negative. There's always seasons of waiting and seasons of harvest. There's seasons of testing and seasons of breakthrough. To everything, there's a season and a time for every matter of purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. 
Anybody can criticize. Anybody can talk scandalously about you because of what you did or did not do. But they don't know your story. They don't know how many storms God has brought you through. I've learned how to ignore some foolishness. Come on, if I, if I, if you try to respond to everything that everybody got to say and accuse and every opinion that people got, that's all you would spend your time doing. But I've discovered that God has anointed you to do his will and you do not have to waste your time responding to foolishness. There are people and opportunities that were ordained for your past that are not ordained for your future. They were right for a season, but that season could come to an end. The key is how you handle the closed doors, how you handle the person that did you wrong. Sometimes instead of kissing them goodbye, we smack them goodbye. I didn't like you anyway. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. The higher we went up, the smaller the circle got. If you really think you're going higher, you got to notice that the higher you go, the smaller your circle. You can't go high and go wide at the same time. If you don't do that right and do it the other way, you're going to keep falling over. So there may have to be some cutting back. Learn how to survive the winter. Speaking of life in its simplest aspect, the first key to learn in your life on the spinning planets to learn how to survive. So we cannot rearrange the coming of the winters, but here's what we could do. Get stronger, wiser, and better so that we can survive better, learning to handle the next winter, the next winter of a divorce, the next winter of an illness, the next winter of a death in the family, the next winter of a loss financially, to be better equipped you got friends for a reason, you got friends for a season, and you have friends for a lifetime. As the patterns of my life change, so do the friends that I hang out with more frequently. And I also believe that as you change and the patterns in your life change, people show up in your life for a reason. And it's exactly the kind of people that you need. They're there for a reason. And the friends of yours that are friends of yours for a lifetime, I bet you don't hang out with them that much at all anyway. But I bet they're the first person that you call when you need to talk to somebody about somebody important. And those folks that are still sitting at the bar and love to blow money that they don't have, those were friends for a season. Get rid of all things, people, and situations that no longer belong in your life. That means you are going to boldly step into and walk into the unfamiliar boldly get rid of things people relationships friendships surroundings deciding that you love yourself enough to no longer walk in the direction of pain drama or dysfunction the collection of ideas that turned your life around the collection of ideas that uh, caused you to learn extra skills you got to have a good plan you got to have a good health plan you know, you can't be out of breath, right? You gotta have the breath, you gotta have the vitality. So you gotta have a good health plan. You gotta have a good financial plan. Learning to handle the passing of time. And that's what life is all about. Taking them on, finding solutions, executing, recording progress. You got to change how you see yourself. You got to quit seeing yourself as a failure. You gotta quit seeing yourself as defeated. You've got to stop seeing yourself in a negative view. Why? Because your perception has to do with the way you think. And however you see yourself is going to impact or determine your thinking. Your perception has to do with the way you process information. I mean, if you're stuck in inferior and you're stuck in all these things, it will determine the, the way you process information. It's going to affect the way you view situations around you in your life. I'm asking you to be at peace with your past, at peace with what you don't understand. Not bitter, angry, the chip on your shoulder. That's not going to keep you from your destiny, it's leading you to your destiny. Kiss it goodbye and move forward. You are in your new season. Some of y'all came up with New Year's resolutions. You've already fell apart. You're supposed to step into the happy new you year. So many of y'all are in spiritual chains. 
You're not even physically behind bars. You are spiritually behind bars. You are stuck. You are institutionalized. Here's what everybody has the opportunity to climb the ladder. Now, first, all you need is what? A chance. But here's the greatest advantage, having the right philosophy. A change and a shift in philosophy here starts to change everything. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. If you work hard on your job, you can make a living, which is noble. If you work hard on yourself, you could make a fortune, which is exciting. If you have friends that make you wrong for changing your life for the better, that's their issue. It's not yours. I want you to be transformed out of the world. Transform or change from how you used to think, how you used to act. I want you to change yourself from the world to the word. I want you to change yourself from those ideas that you got in the world and be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. If you're not prepared to go through some bloody stuff and some dirty stuff, you don't want to keep feeding on this kind of word because it, it will open up your mind and open up your thinking and open up your concepts until all of a sudden you, you are uncomfortable in what you were once comfortable in. We were born to do a special work. You were born to do a special work. You are here for a reason, to do the greater work. Not just work for a living, but to make a difference with your life. You're thinking on another level and it's causing a separation. What used to be funny isn't funny anymore. And, and what you used to be satisfied with, you're not satisfied with anymore. And all of a sudden you don't fit in the places you used to fit in. And they think you're acting strange. And they say things like, you forgot where you came from. I didn't forget it. I just can't stay in it. So we've been talking about the power to change yourself. And ladies and gentlemen, you all have the power to change your life. Right now, you have the power to change. Say this out loud. I have the power to change my life now. Every time I climb up a little bit, I start this pattern where I sabotage or I start to believe too much or my relationships go sideways. You're falling into these patterns. There's massive power in beginning to understand that's not who you are. You are not your possessions. You are not your accomplishments. You are not what other people say you are. You are not what you look like. And guess what else you're not? You are not your patterns, but your life becomes a combination and a result of your pattern. The great thing about us is that we can change these patterns if we identify them. You got to weep with those that weep and laugh with those that laugh. You got to have this full understanding of the game. You got to understand the highs and the lows, the tragedy and the triumph. Just like in your mind, you got to stand guard at the door of your mind. Don't become a victim of yourself. Beware of the thief in your mind that's after your promise and see if you can't engage in this mental contest and win the day. When you have a vision, all of a sudden, all of the pain in your life now begins to have a purpose because you realize I'm not there yet. I'm on the way. I'm going to keep on believing. I'm going to wait for it. Habakkuk says, write the vision down. Make it plain, make it clear, visualize it, see it, think about it, share about it. Why don't you kiss the self-pity goodbye? Being critical, sarcastic, that doesn't look good on anyone. Some people can wear designer clothes, they can have nice hair, they look great on the outside. The problem is none of that can cover up what's on the inside. If we would spend half as much time on the inside as we do the outside, we'd be much better off. And when you are frustrated with the people you love, the conflict is overwhelming. 
It's one thing to be angry with people you don't know. But when you are angry with people you're in covenant with, the confusion is overwhelming because one thing says, love them, and the other thing says, I want to choke you. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you develop, something you become, you attract success. So the whole key to unlock all the treasures is by your own personal development. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here? The major question to ask on the job is what am I becoming here? Everybody wears this public mask or this social mask, I call it, where they're, it's who they want everybody to think they are. It's the best put version of themselves. And if you're not careful, you begin to compare your own real identity with other people's public mask. Don't compare yourself. Most of the people you see on social media or even in your personal life, or even when you go to lunch with them or see them at work, they're wearing what I would call a public mask. And oftentimes what we do in life is we compare our real identity that we're working on and we're growing to their mask. Any comparison doesn't serve us. When you're in a disagreement with somebody, it's the mask they're wearing compared to the identity you have, and then you begin to run a pattern to respond to it. I'm not living in regrets, beating myself up. I'm putting an end to what's been passed down. I'm breaking the generational curse, and I'm starting the generational blessing. The life is about growth. You can either go back to your comfort zone, and there you won't find any growth, or you must be willing to go forward and face your fears again and again and again. Because you're never going to have a, a fear-free existence. I mean, some fear is acceptable and legitimate. Being stopped by fear is the difference between having a fear and the fear having you. Live your life being present to who you are and what your superpower is. Don't be a volunteer victim. You've got something. You came here with something. You were chosen. Is there something you need to kiss goodbye? A hurt? A bad attitude? They were in your past. They don't belong in your future. Forgetting what lies behind. I press to the high calling. You can go through life holding on to hurts, but that will keep you from the new levels, from the high calling. It's time to kiss some things goodbye. Kiss the disappointment goodbye. God has something better. Kiss that failure goodbye. This is a new day. One of the reasons that people don't change is because they really don't know why they are here on the earth. They don't know and they don't understand their purpose in life. And when you know your purpose you're going to change when you know your purpose if your life and the people that you have in your life creates nightmares for your life the nightmares that you're having while you're awake you're witnessing nightmares drama dysfunction negative people you consuming your life it's like oh there's negative dysfunction and drama and you're going to walk into the direction of dysfunction and drama when you go to sleep at night, those nightmares are going to continue to your sleep because of what you're deciding to do while you're awake. How long is the night? It's only a few hours. Come on. There's never been a double night. So learn to think day when it's night. And then you must learn to think night when it's day. So you must think negative when it's positive. You must think winter when it's summer. You must not be faked out when it's nice. You must think storm in the summer and not get faked out. Work while it's day, work, work while it's day because the night's coming. So I'd ask yourself today, what are the patterns you're running that don't serve you? Begin to be aware of those patterns. Know who your real identity is. See those patterns when they're happening. Interrupt them. Continue to work on your identity. These two things, I think, are the critical components to making the decisions and the choices in our life. That when we look back, I don't want you to end up in your 80s or 90s and regret the choices you made. Regret the patterns you ran. 
and that you just unconsciously went through your life without choosing the direction of it, choosing the decisions. I tell you what, don't ever let the devil steal your hope. I mean, hope is the most powerful motivator. When you continue to have hope, the devil cannot defeat you. And the word hope just simply means that you're expecting something good to happen at any moment. You say, well, I'm sick today. Well, expect to be well tomorrow. And if tomorrow you're not well, then expect to be well the next day. There comes a point in your life when you look in the mirror and, and who's looking back at you realizes that's all you're ever going to be. Wow, what a blow, what a punch in the gut. And, and I kept seeking, I kept working at it because the one that I was living wasn't me and he had to go. You want to be successful, watch successful people and do what successful people do. And so I'm saying to you, you have something special. You have greatness in you. I want you to write this down. Do what works. It will be hard because life is hard. That's what life is. These challenges that you face, they're going to do their best to take you down. Do not let them break you down. In fact, let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let the adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. It's guaranteed the spring will come, but it's not a guarantee of a harvest. Here's the key. You must do something with the spring. Take advantage of the spring. It's an opportunity now to turn things around. It's an opportunity to have a better one than, than the last one. Now, here's what you must do in the spring. It's a very short season. Usually you must hurry, but life at the longest is short. So you must learn to appreciate opportunity and take advantage of it while it's day, while it's time. Now we call spring a window of opportunity. It may not stay open very long, so take advantage. You came here to make a difference. You came here to live an impactful life. Even though you're going through the storm, you're not able to soar as high as you once did, God still gives you grace to run. Run. It gets hard sometimes. You keep running. They talk bad about you out of your presence. But keep running. They don't want to see you get a breakthrough. But keep running. Run. Don't get weary. Run. Don't let them discourage you. Don't let the chickens and geese in your life change your ego mentality.